I got a feeling that you got me covered too. I got you covered. I got you covered. Hello, and welcome to Devotion Tuesday today. Well, we decided to do this Devotion Tuesday, not necessarily out of a you know, specific devotional or any kind of subject in, in that sense, but we really wanted you to kind of think as we're going to be going ahead a little bit with the events of the election coming up. We're not going to get any political discussions or anything like that, but we, we wanted to kind of have a discussion about, and we will be talking it, talking about it on a live tonight as well. And if you miss that, or this doesn't come out in time, please go check that out about agreeing to disagree. I think we've lost the art of debating and debating in a way that is kind and loving and acceptable and accepting other people's point of view. It does not mean that we need to change our point of view. The reason why we don't do necessarily, and I'm not going to close us down to ever doing a devotion uh, live, but we choose to do the majority of them pre-recorded because we feel as if those that want to tune in for Devotion Tuesday can, those that don't, don't have to. Um, and that's, of course, with any live, you can either be a part of it, or if it's not a subject you're into or have a disagreement with, then you don't watch that one. But I think as we're going to be entering in these waters over the next little bit, we need to be careful that we are showing for, you know, God's love and, and having those discussions in a healthy manner. It is okay for you to set boundaries up and be able to say, well, before we go into this discussion, please know that you may most likely not change my mind. I'll have a nice discussion with you, but we're going to do it peacefully and respectfully and, and loving. And then at the end, let's choose to agree to disagree on the subject. Because at the end of the day, the only thing that really matters is this, right? This is God's infallible word from start to finish. There's nothing in this book that needed to be taken out or added. It is all true and it is his living word. And so when we are talking about any kind of subject that may be very, very much divisive, we need to go back and in, into this book and find out where our moral compass is. There are things that we believe here that we're not going to change our mind on. We're going to stead, you know, stay fast in the fact that in God's word, he tells us exactly how he wants us to be able to handle that situation how he is saying that situation should be, what he says is not uh, pleasing to him, what is pleasing to him. And so we need to go back to here, back to his word over and over again when we're challenged with, you know, a discussion. Now, of course, the Bible was written a long time ago. It's still very true today, and we still can gleam so much out of it, and it is it it should be a place of solace for us. But there were things back then that were not things that we experience today, but they can still find what God's answer is in this word. And so as we're going to go forward, we're going to start having those discussions. We probably all already have. We've already had discussions in the past, some of them have ended friendships and ended, ended 
ended family relationships. And to me, that saddens me greatly because this book here is not meant to hit people over the head and say, this is God's word. This is exactly what he meant. No, this is supposed to be a book of love. Yes, God is just and God is holy, but he is also a compassionate and loving God. He was the one that sent his son to die on the cross for your sins because he loved you so much. He's giving you a free gift. It's right in here. But we need to stay fast in what God is saying, what his word is saying, to whatever the subject may be at hand. We don't have to necessarily like the person that's sitting in the office or the vice president's office or the state governor or elected officials. We may not get the person that we choose in that office and who we voted for. But we have to remember at the end of the day, God is on the throne. He is the one that is sitting there. He knows exactly what is happening and going to happen. He's in total control always. And that's where we need to stay steadfast. You know, there have been discussions I've had with family members and friends and said, listen, where I stand, where my moral compass is, is right here. At the end of the conversation, my mind is not changing because feelings can be fickle. So it doesn't necessarily mean or or necessarily matter what I may feel feels good. It what matters is, is what is God saying about that Pacific subject? That's all that matters. Now we can have the discussion about certain things, whatever that may be. But if God's word is saying that that is not pleasing to him, you're not changing my mind. Doesn't mean that we can't be friends and it doesn't mean that I can't love you and I can't pray for you. Sometimes we need to put discussions that we know we're not going to win or we're not going to change our mind on with our friends and family and put them on the shelf and say, these are discussions we're just not going to talk about unless you're ready to sit down and hear both sides and be willing to accept the differences. We need to do this in love. We need to be willing to have discussions in love and show people that this book, this Bible, this holy word is a love story from start to finish. So I really hope that you're going to be taking these next couple weeks coming ahead And look at that from a very different perspective. I'll have a discussion with anybody. But I'm going to go to here for my moral compass. Am I perfect? Far from it. There's a prayer that I usually try to say. Lord, I know I'm going to put my feet on the floor. And I know that I'm going to sin somewhere in the day today. And sometimes before I go to sleep, I say, Lord, forgive me for the sins that I don't even realize I did today. And bring them to my attention so that I can better myself. Am I ever going to be perfect? No, the only perfect one was Jesus. He lived the perfect life. He died on the cross for your sins so that you could have eternal life. And if somebody chooses, a friend or a family member chooses to not speak to you anymore because you do not agree with whatever they do politically or religiously, I know it hurts. I've had it happen. But you need to work through that. 
and come back with love and be willing to forgive. And most important, pray for that person. Those that do not want to look in here, right? To be able to say, let's look here for the word and the answers. Let's look here for what God is saying on a certain subject. If they don't see Christ, if they don't see God and they don't want to have a relationship with him, hitting them over the head with this is not going to do them any good. It's not going to do you any good. But prayer is so powerful. It is something we all can do. It's something we all can connect with. Because at the end of the day, God, the Holy Spirit, has got to be the one to show them that this book is true from start to finish. They have to go find it. You can just be the person that plants the seeds in love. We may not always like the political and the decisions that are made and all that kind of stuff, but at the end of the day, we have to remember who is in control. God is in control. He always is. He is the same today, tomorrow, and always. He never changes. He's a lamp unto our feet. So may I encourage you to be willing to put boundaries up. When people are talking about subjects and whether it's religious or political or whatever it is, if you have a core belief, if you have a moral compass and it directs you right back to here, it's what God is saying about whatever it is. And you know that I'm not changing my core belief. Set boundaries up. Do it in love. Do it in respect. Be willing to have the discussion if you feel like you can. Be willing to say, wait a minute. I'm not going to change how I believe. I'm not going to change where my moral compass guide is. I'll be willing to have the discussion. But at the end of the day, let's remember that I don't want to lose you as a friend over whatever discussion that is. So if we're going to have it, let's have it. And then let's agree to disagree and still be friends at the end or family. That's so much more important really at the end. So I'm going to challenge you to find a verse within the Bible that you can set your moral compass on. For me, it's John 3, 16. We all know that verse, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believeth in him should never perish but have everlasting life. It reminds me to continue to go back to the cross. It reminds me to continue to go back to the Bible. So my challenge for you today is to find a verse that can give you always that moral compass to bring you back here in today's world with all of the stuff going on. And sometimes we get so distracted with the stuff and the drama, we forget that the solace comes back to here comes back to going back to the cross over and over and over again. So I encourage you to do that. Let's take a moment and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word that you have given us to continue to go back on. 
we continue to need to go back to your word over and over again when we're challenged with, you know, a belief or we're challenged with something going on in the world today. All the answers are in this word. And we ask that you guide us through. You keep us strong in our faith. We thank you that you sent your son to die on the cross for our sins so that we can have everlasting life with you. We ask of the next coming weeks as things politically are going to heat up that you would just keep us at peace, remembering that no matter who is in the office of the presidency or local governments, or the Senate, or the House of Representative, Representatives, that you, dear Heavenly Father, are on the throne and in control. You love each and every one of us. I pray for anybody going through financial issues or health issues. I pray for all the victims of the recent storms, that you would get them all their needs that they need met today. As we're going to be going into Thanksgiving holiday, I just ask that we can come with a grateful heart and that will continue all year long, that we can remember the things you give us, the roof of our head, the food in our stomach, the connections, the people, the family, those that may have lost family members or friends because of device, divisive subjects, I pray that they would mend those fences. You were, it's not your will for any of us. And dear Holy Father, I ask that you will answer the unspoken prayer request. I pray that those listening that are just curious about you, Lord, that they would go right to the Bible, your living word, from start to finish. It is true and accurate. There's nothing that needs to be taken out, nothing that needs to be added. It is perfect in every way. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have blessed us with here at Blessed to Crochet. Thank you for each and every one. As we continue to grow, let us not forget the blessings that you've given us. And may we be a blessing, not only through this channel, to the people that come in and support it, but those people that we may come across in our path. I thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for everything. In Jesus' precious name, amen. So, I'm going to challenge you. If the next coming weeks are a little bit nerve-wracking, go here. Run to here. Don't walk. Don't stroll. Run to here. Run to the cross. Put on music. We've done that where we've done a devotion showing that music can become a devotion. Don't get trapped in all the drama and all the stuff. Focus on here. Focus on God. Connect with him when the world around you is spinning. He's in control, guys. He's in control all the time. Even when it seems like it's he's not, he is. He knows what's going to happen. He knows who's going to win the election. And he has it in the palm of his hands. He has you in the palm of, of his hands. Run to the cross. Run to Jesus. He died because he loved you so much. To me, that's love. That's a gift. It's free. Let us choose 
to take the higher ground and agree to disagree. Let's stay fast and in, in, in knowing that our moral compass is right here. That we don't need to change what we believe morally just because the laws or whatever it is has something different. We need to respect them. We need to abide by them. We have to know where our moral compass sits. And it continuously points us back to the Bible. We just figured this was very fitting of a devotion Tuesday today. Just a little challenge. Find your verse in the Bible that you can have that will repetitively bring you back and make you stay fast in that moral compass. Stay connected, y'all. Thank you so much for having us covered. We have you covered. And remember, be proud of being yourself. Everyone else is taken. God only made one of you. You've got talents and gifts for his glory. And I, I just lift you up all in prayer and uh, have a blessed day. Thank you for stopping on by and being a part of Devotion Tuesday. Now, just a little side note, we've gotten a little behind on quotation re or reflection, quotation Saturday. And so um, we're going to get that back up. We're going to go through up to the point where we kind of got sidetracked and go through all those quotes and get caught up and get those done uh, so that uh, this coming Saturday we will have that out video out and it'll probably be <clears throat> about six or seven uh, different quotes that we'll need to get caught up but then we'll start recording them on a more regular basis so that they're available to you all on Saturday and that's one two you know one of the other ones we do recorded so that people that choose to watch that can uh, we don't want anything to be devices we divisive we want people to come in and be connected here and just at the end of the day say, I respect your opinion. I don't agree with it, but I still love you. I still consider you a friend. And that connection is more important than disagreeing on certain subjects or areas. There's a lot of things we can connect with, guys. Our niche here is connection, not crochet. All right? Have a great night, great day, wherever you are. And we'll see you on the next one. Have a great day. God bless. Bye-bye.